want to talk a bit about the erased manga, particularly in terms of how a structural perspective on its panels can reveal some really clever aesthetic construction. Because I do think that Sanbei is actually very good at utilizing a form to tell a story. Generally, when we look at manga, there's two notable lenses. The first is a sort of semiological perspective, which is where you'll find a lot of lenses working on cultural and socio-historical analysis would look at them. I mean, if you're familiar with the work of Scott McCloud in Understanding Comics, he heavily favors a semiological perspective when he talks about Magritte or when he talks about Japanese aspect-to-aspect -aspect panels. The second is a linguistics approach to manga, particularly in terms of manga and its elements as a grammar, and how that grammar is manipulated sheds light on what certain forms might say. For this, you'll probably find the works of Neil Kahn to be pretty notable. He talks about comics and manga as language, drawing upon Frederick Schott's work. And it's that perspective I want to exercise because it gives us a really useful look at one particular element of manga analysis, and that is its substrate meanings. Khan lists a series of categories called Establisher, Initial, Peak, Release, and Refiners, but I do want to sort of simplify it and talk about one specific aspect about them that, in particular, in terms of how they reveal reading hierarchies. And so I'm going to be using Sanbei's Boku Dakiga Inai Machi, particularly its 37th chapter, because it's a very clear example of stratified reading that happens in manga. But at the same time, it also tells us the limits of formal readings. So it's the first 20 pages. It's the monologue beginning with Satoru's mother talking about all these difficulties and challenges that come with taking care of Satoru and worrying about how long it would be waiting for him to wake up from his coma. But it does something really strange, which is that it ends the sequence with the killer. And there's a very important structural language that's employed to make this work. So, a sequence like this begins with a series of markers on two levels, the elements overlaying the action set of the mother as a point of perspective, and the panels are dominantly what we could consider to be macro and mono panels playing against each other. So, a macro panel is where multiple characters or a scene is emphasized, and a mono panel is where one character is shown, or a singular focus object. When we see part of a character, but not them holistically, it's a micro panel where we see a component of it. And when we look at these panels, we see in this sequence how Sanbei establishes with some macro panels, but then dominantly focuses on mono panels. They're all partial presentations of objects in the world. It's always empty or singular partial components. And what happens is a sort of relaxing, disarming state occurs where the panels are really only linked by the monologue. So what happens is that the intra-panel content never contests the monologue that occurs. The monologue always floats above it, and the panel just kind of follows alongside it. Now this is important because we find out that the monologue sequence ends with the killers, but because the panels are dominantly modeled, there's no clear beat that punctuates the sequence to make us say, oh, here's where the narration ends. We can say that X panel is the moment, but that's a component added in with our own reading habits. And that's a really purposeful move because what it shows us is that it takes advantage of the lexical form of the panels to tell us that what these two characters feel about Satoru isn't that different. And so it's used to emphasize a sickening sensation that one might feel when we get to the moment of revelation. And that revelation is punctured by the single mono panel that's there. So there's this monologue, but within this monologue is this substrate of differentiation that Sanbei attempts to mitigate, probably completely eliminate through the panels. In some way, it comes off as a dissent, but that moment of dissension is not meant to be noticed. It simply is in retrospect once we reach a state in which we realize a dissent has occurred. So the scene is actually quite clever. After all, what differs the mother from the killer? The sequences implies nothing, but that's not necessarily the case because we know that there's a difference, but there's no moment in pure form in which we can distinguish that difference because the panels eliminate any moment of escalation until we know there's an escalation. And so there's a context interjected into the meaning of the sequence as value objects. So what is some of the worth of the context in context? Well, I argue on my main channel that Erase is conducting this criticism of a dangerous procuracy, and I think we can impose that implication here. I mean, a form analysis of the sequence reveals that the form can be corrupted through a strict adherence to grammatology. 
you know, that if we simply follow the rules, then the rules will guide us there. And if you're going to argue that Erased is criticizing the system and how its rules can be corrupted, then this sequence is that concern made manifest through art. It's a look at how the structure of reading panels itself is corrupted, but that judgment we make on that sequence, that very note of distortion, betrays an other element that possibly transcends the form itself. Here, it's the context that we know he's the killer, so there's this outside component that comes in. But do the panels, and it's a possibly roundabout way of showing not only that the feeling of the killer and the mother aren't so different, but it shows through form how someone like Yashiro can slip through the cracks, corrupting the rules. So this isn't the only moment that Sambi actually incorporates this sort of language function in terms of how panels are structured and what are actually in them to create a mesostructure. Um, and this happens actually quite a bit in Erased uh, and in Sambi's work in general. Uh, I sort of spent some time to try and see if perhaps this is just a translation thing where perhaps this whole sequence is dictated purely by translation and looking at the raws I couldn't find any clear or definitive markers that can show a complete split between these subjects. So I do think that this is a purposeful in intentional you know this is a purposeful intentional thing thank you everybody who supports me on patreon it has been hugely helpful um like it has been really really helpful because without patreon i would be i would be losing so much money on this i hope you guys enjoyed the video I, it's a really short video um as i'm working on something else that said uh i'm sure a lot of you guys are completely tired of me talking about erased uh so my apology uh, my apologies on that if you're interested in a different topic, um, there's a really cool video by Steve M where he talks about Yasuji Mori and the influence that Mori has uh, on Samurai Jack. So it is in the video and I'm going to link it in the video description as well. You might find it really cool, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, peace.